Welcome back. Today I'm going to show you how to sharpen specifically masakagi knives. Masakagi knives have been really popular for us. You know, there are Kato-san, Kurosaki-san, Saji-san, and also the Ikeda-san primarily making knives for us. Today I'm going to show you how to sharpen specifically Masakage Yuki, Koishi, Mizu, and Masakage Zero with those knives with primarily bevel like these. If you want to learn how to sharpen Masakage Kiri, Shimo, or Kumo, check out another video where I explain how to sharpen the knives without the primarily bevel. For sharpening beginners, today I'm going to show you how to sharpen not only the edge, but the this whole primarily bevel right here. The reason why we're showing how to sharpen Masakage knives is that the there is a little bit of a distinct feature on many of Masakage knives with the these primarily bevels. So many knife makers try to make this primarily bevel either pretty straight or convex. And don't get me wrong, Masakage sharpeners and blacksmiths, they try to make it like that as well. But more often than others, you may see a little bit of a lower spots on the Masakage knives with the bevels. I'm gonna cover today how to sharpen and what to do when you actually start to see those low spots on the bevels. Here are the things that I'm gonna use today. First and foremost, I'm going to use Knifeware 220 grit stone. You'll be doing most of the heavy lifting with this 220 grit stone. Then I'm going to go up to a few 1,000 stones. The Naniwa Hibiki 1,000, this will shape the bevel really, really nicely. Then I have the Knifeware 1,000 stone. This will get really nice smoky finish on the bevel. A few finishing stones. I have Knifeware 4,000 to make the uh, edge really nice and shiny. Hibiki 3,000 to get really precise last micro bevel edge. I have Naniwa Super Stone 3000 grit. This is great. So called Kasumi Stone. It really makes the uh, cladding steel nice and foggy and the core steel nice and shiny. Of course, don't forget you want to have some chewing stones. I have the regular knife for chewing stones and as well as the Atoma Diamond Plate. And I'll explain it later, but I actually have a sandpaper. This one is 240 grit sandpaper as well as those small finger stones. These are basically small pieces left off from the Nike or 220 or the 1000, which I'm gonna use to kind of clean up the look of the bevel. Well, first thing that I'm gonna do is actually magically appear this surround wrap or the plastic wrap to protect the handles because, you know. I'm gonna use the uh, Nike or 220 stone, do the, a lot of the heavy lifting. What I'm going to do is to sharpen this whole bevel and I'm going to show you how they will look like as it goes the where it's going to be ground where you where to put the pressure on and all that kind of jazz there's a little bit of high point on this knife so that it actually rocks a little bit weird so the reason why I checked the profile is that you know you want to make sure there is no chip left or the weird profile before you start thinning uh, otherwise it's really hard to fix after you made all the thinning adjustments. 220 grit stone, this will do the uh, most of the heavy lifting and also the uh, you know chip removal or the uh, reprofiling and stuff. I chew them really nicely. So I am going to actually, and when I'm reprofiling, I actually sharpen in a really, really aggressive angle. Yeah, really the main purpose here is to fix the profile. So I could go really nice and aggressive then I will thin it later on. From here, the thinning starts. Like any other videos that I showed you how to thin your knife, it's very similar. When you're thinning, you want to put the uh, knife bevel flat on the stone. Fingers, I usually stir from the very close to the edge first and do back and forth motion. After like a while, you can probably move the finger a little bit along, but the primary purpose here is to thin your edge right here. So I'm going to put the uh, pressure pretty close, probably a millimeter or two millimeters above the edge, then go here. This particular knife is pretty easy and straightforward as the blade is not that long, so you can it just like 
whole blade will touch on the stone entire time. By putting the pressure really close to the edge, I'm just working on about two to three millimeters from the edge first. Then you want to put the uh, pressure a little bit above to work on the whole bevel here. So just keep going till to put the pressure close to the edge. I thin the about two to three millimeters from the edge here. So there is a micro bevel that's been put by, well, Nolan Sharpens knife. So there is a micro bevel about millimeter. So that's the uh, primary, well, the, sorry, that's the secondary bevel. If I flip this to the other side, that bevel is pretty much gone. And that's how you know you thin the edge enough. Like you could thin the edge until you raise the really big burr, but sometimes you have to be really careful because when you do it, it's really easy to mess up the profile. You know, one part gets really, really thin and start to break off. The profile becomes very weird. There's low spot on the edge and it's really hard to fix it from there. So my goal usually is to thin until this, I guess the secondary bevel is like less than a hairline thin. <laughs> I still want to see it, but just barely. It's just like enough to catch the light. So I'm gonna keep on sharpening up towards this line called Shinogi. Placement of the fingers, I will place my fingers a little bit more higher above from the edge, probably middle or center of this bevel. Then just go back and forth. This I'm sharpening. Even though you are trying to sharpen whole bevel, there may be some spot that is not really touching, that the stone is not really touching, where the light reflects slightly different. You see more when I actually moved up to a 1000 grit stone, so I can, I will explain it later on as well. But don't worry about at this point. These will not do any harm to your knife. This, in Japanese, we call it ekubo. Ekubo is the little tiny, you know, cleavage, like when you, when you smile, that, that's the ekubo. Reason why you see the little low spots on the bevels on these knives is that the, uh, when they're sharpening or when they're grinding the bevel down, they use this massive wheel. They try to create nice convex edge with the wheel like this and they go this and the wheel touches this way. It's really, really hard to get either flat, nice convex edge with the wheel that's actually tried to make it naturally concave. So knife makers do, you know, use their place and they use their wrist to get the, uh, get as little, I guess, dimples as possible, but it's bound to happen. So uh, if it's really, really bad, I may be a little bit of a concern, but the, uh, Something like this is very, very minimal. And I will explain how to, I guess, deal with it if you don't want to have this, you know, smiley ekubo on your, uh, on your knife. So now I'm actually moving up to the other side. Like I was doing the other side, I will focus or I will put the pressure on the closer to the edge first. This is probably easier to see. As you can see, I'm just working on about two millimeters just above the edge. So I am not sharpening really, really flat. I'm putting the pressure down at the very end to make a little more convexity to it. Alrighty, so now I'm going to move up to a 1000 stone. In particular, I like to use this a Naniwa Hibiki 1000 uh, for as a next step from the Knife or 220 stone because this is a really hard stone. It, the, uh, it can tell where the stone is actually touched on that knife that you're sharpening. By me, I'll show you momentarily. I'm just gonna do the same thing 
Starting from right hand side, I will just do the very close to the edge first. So the, my finger, my uh, position, finger position is very close to the edge here. You can see it's like nicely polished, but there's like spots like here, my like tip, of my index finger. I could go a little bit more higher to polish it. Because this stone is really flat and very hard, it only touches on the highest spot of this bevel. That's why you can see where it touches and also the, you can tell where it's not touching. Sometimes the, those softer stones like knife or 220 stone, what happens is that the, uh, sometimes those grains or the grits that's come out, off from the uh, stone can scratch a little bit on, on the, uh, those low spots or the dimple spots as well. So this one is gonna actually tell you where that the low spot is. So now I'm going to actually work on a little bit more higher on the bevel by pressing it down closer to the uh, bevel. Oh, sorry, closer to the shinogi. It's actually started to come out very nicely by sharpening, again, on the uh, this Hibiki 1000, really hard stone. Hopefully that light catches very nicely, so. This part here has been sharpened or touched on the stone here where this hasn't. Although you may be able to see the scratches goes like this way, this is done by the 220 stone, like those like uh, grits that fell off from the stone scratch those uh, places, but this whole part and this part is low spot, ekubo or dimple that does not touch on the stone. The, uh, these dimples or the ekubos or those low spots will not do any harm on your knife. And it will be gone as you sharpen or as you keep sharpening more and more. All right, so I'm gonna flip the side, do the same thing, very close to the edge. Each size are unique. There are different spots that's the lower the uh, on part of the knife, right? Like on the one side to another, so it's kind of uh, very interesting. From now on, I made the bevel really nice and thin. This 1000 Naniwa Hibiki stone was a great way to tell where the low spots were, okay? So what I'm going to do from here on is to make the bevel a little bit more even. Now you know where the low spots are. You don't, again, have to remove the low spots. I had this talk with the other sharpeners in Japan and asked what they do with those dimples. Some of the solutions that I'm gonna show you today is say, for example, use the sandpaper to blend them in or use the, those finger stones if you have to basically match the scratches of that knife, or of the finish. You're not really fixing the problem by blending those finishes in because as you blend them, you're making low spots lower. You don't have to do it. If that finish bothers and you wanna make a really nice clean finish, do the you know, things that I will show you today. But here is how we could do to blend those things in. One, probably this is the easiest way to do it at home. If you have a piece of sandpaper, I have a little bit of coarser grit sandpaper here today, and make sure you have the, just put that, you know, on the piece of cloth or a piece of rag and water, and make sure you get the sandpaper that's water resistant, and just very gently you work on the bevel yeah, yeah, well, be very careful. Don't do this at home or do it at home, but the, uh, be very careful. The, even though I have not sharpened the edge, you can cut yourself very easily as well. So this is the easy way to blend the finishes. I mean, you can still see the little bit of low spots here and there. I could probably do a little bit more work on it, but so this is before blending, or this is before the sandpaper. And this is after. I'm gonna grab the, uh, this Knife for 1000 grit and do the very same thing. Knife for 1000 grit is very softer stone. So instead of touching that, those like only the high spot, this touches a little bit more 
on the softer, lower spots as well. But it's not gonna, it's not like a toothbrush. It's not, not, not gonna go, go in into the like, low spots. What I'm gonna show you is the, I'm gonna do the same thing with the, uh, what I did with the Hibiki 1000. So do the edge first, then, uh, then I'll show you what it looks like. You can see there are low spots there still. But it's a little more cloudier, I think, on the, uh, this side than the, like, say, compared to this side. This, is, this side I've only done with uh, Hibiki 1000. Okay? What I'm gonna do, so there are spots still here and here. What I'm gonna do is Lay a blade flat, get the piece of my finger stone. This is the broken piece of a Knifeware 1000. Put the water on, then work very gently on the bevel. The, I put the water and uh, lay the finger stone down and work on the spot that was lower. That, so you see, so that little dimpled part. Very gently, back and forth motion. Be careful along the edge here. It is sharp. Not as sharp, but it's sharp. You don't want to put too much water. What it does is that this mud or the, uh, this slurry is doing a lot of work on the blend in the bevel. So um, enough water, not too much. And just do a very gentle pressure back and forth motion. So what, that's what, this, what it looks like after it's done. The, you know, you can still see a little bit of, you know, different scratch patterns, but it's really hard. Again, it's, it's a lower spot. It's a dimples that the regular stone can't reach. So if the knife looks pretty even like this, I will be happy. I'm going to finish this knife coat the, uh, with a Kasumi finish, which means the, uh, you know, the cladding, there is a cladding steel. There's a coarse steel. I'm gonna make the coarse steel nice and shiny and clouding steel a little bit more cloudy. Kasumi means uh, clou like cloudy or mist in Japanese. Here we go. I have knife for 4,000 stone. Instead of say, usually when I'm sharpening knives, my knife kind of sits about 45 to 60 degree angle, you know, as opposed to the, uh, the stone. I'm actually going to do parallel to the stone. That is, and effectively, working just on the edge here. So put the pressure very close to the edge and just do this. Just back and forth, uh, vertically or the parallelly. I put the pressure down quite a bit so that, yes, there is a little bit of an angle. I will probably do a tiny bit higher. You see the cladding line too? Just do vertical back and forth. Edge is nice and shine, polished up, leaving this cladding part nice and misty. Well, from here, I'm going to show you and just, you know, last minute sharpening. What that means is that I'm going to sharpen the micro bevel. I'll use the Hibiki 1000. It's really nice and hard, nice and straight, flat. It gets really nice crisp edge. Hold the knife, 15 degrees. If you want to learn more about how to sharpen the basic way, check out the video. You do this until you raise the burr. After you raise the burr, take the burr off. Going up on a step, finishing with ASMR. A S MR, tiny bit of leather shopping action. So that's done. When you thin the bevel properly, sharpening process is very, very easy. It doesn't take nearly as long as thinning the blade. If you thin your knife, like every time you sharpen it, you would have, you spend I basically you save the time because if you wait for three, four, five, or ten uh, sharpenings later, 
you will have to remove so much more steel wall from the bevel. That's how you can sharpen a Masakage knife or Masakage knives. Not limited to Masakage Yuki, but this technique can apply to Masakage Koishi, Mizu, and Zero. All the knives with the primary bevels. Even it's not limited to Masakage knives, the, there are knives that may have a little bit more bigger concavity or the bigger dimples or ekubo on the knife. And this is how you could blend or the sharpen those knives as well. If you want to learn more about knife sharpening, check out this playlist right here maybe. And let us know in your comments what knife that you want to learn how to sharpen. Ciao.